Hi everyone, um, welcome back to Junior Coding League. I'm Archit, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to solve USICO bronze. Now, USICO is the USA Computing Olympiad. It's a national Olympiad that tests the ability of students um, to solve certain algorithmic problems using coding. Now today, um, I'm going over the January 2020 bronze problems, and the reason for that is because the qualifying score to move up to the next level or silver, the level silver is 750, which is like an average score, meaning that the problems weren't too easy and weren't too difficult, which means that this is a really good way to prepare yourself um, for the use code bronze competition. Um, now I will be making more videos to go over different contests, but you can find a whole host of contests just by going to usecode.org, clicking contests here and seeing all the past contests and all the problems and test data and solutions. Um, so, you know, let's jump right into it. Um, let's start off with word processor. Um, so keep in mind as I go over these problems, I'm going to be expecting you to know how to use a programming language and um, use things like input and output to read from files and write to files. Um, because, you know, the main focus of the use code competition is on the algorithms and the logic that you put in, not on the code or the application that you're building, like many hackathons. And that's what makes use code unique. Um, but let's start off with this first problem. Feel free to pause and read. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain the problem really quickly so all of you guys can understand it and then show you my solution that I've written in Java. Um, I won't write it um, just to save time, but I will highlight the key parts of my code and explain what they do. So let's start off. Um, this is the first problem of the use code bronze, which is conventionally the easiest. And this problem you could probably solve with zero algorithm experience. Um, and all you have to do is um, you're given a sentence right here or an essay right here. You're told the amount of words in that essay and you're told, sorry, the maximum amount of letters on a given line. Um, and you have to format that essay. So right here, if you look at hello, my hello has five words. My has two words. They add up to seven exactly. So no line can have more than seven characters and spaces don't count as characters. So, um, the logic behind this one is really simple. All you have to do is you have to go through each word and check if adding that word onto the current line will increase the character count um, and make it greater than the limit. And if it's greater than the limit, you just add it to a new line. If it's not greater than the new limit, you just add it to the current line. So let me show you my um, code for this one, wordprocessor.java. Another note, um, I have my code in packages. When you submit this to the online grader in USICO, you would comment out this line because that creates an error. Um, but yeah, all I have here is um, I'm taking um, the input and I've created, you know, obviously the output file. Um, I'm taking the input, I'm splitting it into words. Um, and again, all I'm doing is removing all the spaces from the words um, and then adding them onto the current line. If I, if, the, if I can, you know, if it's under the limit, then I do it. If I can't, I just create a new line. Um, and then I just write it to the um, file and close the file. That's it. So obviously this first problem, very easy, very simple, almost no algorithms involved. So let's jump right into the second problem. Um, for the second problem, I will actually be using word counter just to show you my thoughts just to write them out, type them out so you can see. Um, I like to type it on word counter. You can use Google Docs or something. Um, but again, feel free to pause right here, read this um, description because you know in the actual competition, you won't have somebody explaining it for you, but I'm gonna explain right now. So in this problem, what we're given is, first we're given the amount of cows in a line, right? There's a farmer who created a line of cows and he numbered each of his cows one through five or one through however many cows there are. So if there's a hundred cows, one through hundred, and they're arranged in a random order. And so what we're given is the sums of every uh, adjacent cow. So, you know, let's look at this example. So if this was our starting lineup, three, one, five, two, four, then three plus one is four, one plus five is six, five plus two is seven, four plus two is six. And so we're given the sums of every, of the cow that is next to every given cow. And given those sums, we have to reverse it and find what the original position was. And so here's where the logic starts to kick in. Because what you have to do is find a smart way 
of taking this list of sums of adjacent cows and reversing it to the original position. And at first, that might seem impossible because certain positions, um, you have multiple possible arrangements that could lead to that um, outcome. But um, what we're told here is that we need to find the arrangement where the smallest cow is put front. So if you have an arrangement like three, one, two, five, four or something, and one, three, two, five, four, and, and if they bo both work, you would go with the one where the smallest um, number comes first in the sequence. So one, two, five, four. Um, our algorithm will automatically solve for that, so you won't have to worry about it, um, but that's just something to keep in mind if you're using a different type of algorithm. Um, but so let's let me write out um, my reasoning here. So what were the numbers we were given were four, um, six, seven, six, four, six, seven, six. Now, the key, one of the key insights here, one of the key insights, insight is that no cow can have the same number. No cow can have the same number. And so, like, if we you know try and work backwards and come up with an arrangement where we have two cows with a number two on them, then we know that that arrangement is not possible. You know, that's impossible. And so um, key insight number two, number two is that once we have a certain cow to find the cow next to it, all you need to do is subtract the sum from the number of that cow. So if we subtract sum from the number of the cow, um, we can find, find the original number of the cat. Um, and so that's a key insight because it's going to help us when it comes to um, everything that we're doing in reversing these sums and finding the original position um, of these cows. And so the reason that's important is because what we can essentially do is loop through the possible um, first cows in the, in the, um, in the line. And so here's what I mean by that. We don't know what number our first cow was for sure, but we can guess. So let's say we start off with one. So if our first cow was one, then our next cow in the line would be four minus one equals three. Um, and then after that, the next cow would be six minus three, three. And so in this case, because we have two number threes, right? Two cows that are number three, we can't have this list. We can stop immediately, move on to the next scenario. In the next scenario, the cow number two is in front. And if the cow number two is in front, then the next cow must be four minus two, which is equal to two. Again, um, not possible. So then we move on. Four minus um, three, right? Our first cow would be three. Four minus three is one. Six minus one is five. Seven minus five is two. Six minus two is four. And this, since this is a working scenario, we stop our program, we end it, we write it to the file, and we're done. And if we look back at, our, um, at the um, output, that's exactly the output we got. So let's go back to Eclipse. I'll show you my code. So again, all of this is my input and output setup, um, storing it into different data structures. But let me go over the main thing that's happening here. The main thing that's happening here is what we're doing is um, we're going through the sums. And every time we successfully complete an iteration, we take off that number. Um, from the list of sums. As soon as our list of sums is zero, we break out of our loop, write to the file, and we're done, just like we did um, in, our, in our logic. Um, but we, we keep incrementing the first cow in the list. And so what we do is we start off with the first cow of the list, go through, check if that works. Um, if all of it works, then our copy sum ar uh, array list will be of size zero. We break and write everything. If it doesn't work, then what we do is we end up incrementing the, um, the original or initial position of the cows and redoing our entire thing. That's why it's in a while loop. And you know, this solution ends up working in the perfect time complexity, um, which ends up uh, allowing us to handle huge, large data sets, large lists of sums, and solving the entire problem. And so let's jump into the final problem, which is the hardest problem, and that's called race. So what happens in race is that we have a cow that's running in a race. Um, and we're given on our first line two integers. The first um, line will give us the integer, the integers k and n. And our the number k will be the length of our race in meters. 
and the number n will be the amount of different values of um, the maximum uh, speed she can go at the end of the race. So let me let me explain that a bit more. So in this problem, you have a cow named Bessie who can every second increase her speed by one meters per second, keep it the same, or decrease it. If she um, increases her speed, you know she's going to travel that many meters in a given second because she's going at meters per second. But she wants to show off. So at the end of the race, right, one second before the race ends, she wants to be going at a certain speed that they're going to give us. So that speed could be one meter per second, four meters per second, whatever. But by the end of the, that race, she has to be at that speed. So you can't just increment her speed every second to make her go as fast as possible. So you have to strategically increment and decrement her speed um, and figure out um, the minimum time she needs to run that amount of meters to end up at the end uh, running at the given speed. And so here's an input. Um, we're given 10 meters as the length of the race. We're given five different speeds that she wants to end at, at which is one, two, three, four, five. So when X is one, here's the optimal solution. When X is three, here's the optimal solution. When X is, um, and here's, this is what's not possible when X is three, um, so on and so forth, right? Um, so feel free to pause, read over it, obviously, um, again, because that's only going to help you interpret it. Um, but here's, you know, the key insight for um, this um, race, right? So if we have 10 meters and we want to end off at one meter per second, then we have to strategically figure out when to increase, when to increase our speed and when to decrease our speed and when to keep it the same. So the key insight here is that to find the amount of um, the maximum speed we can go, what we do is find the sum if we go to that speed of that number and all the numbers after it that end off with the number one. So let me give an example. So if our current speed is 10, 10 meters per second, we want to end at five meters per second, and we only have a certain amount of meters remaining, to find out how many meters it will take to decrease from 10 to five, all we need to do is find the sum of all numbers from 10 to five. Because in the first second, she'll run 10 seconds. We can only decrease by one meter per second. So then she'll run nine, then she'll run eight, then seven, then six, all the way to five, right? So what we need to do is start off at a speed of zero meters per second, because that's always what she starts off at, and then increment our speed and check if we increment our speed, do we have enough space remaining in the race to end off at the speed we want to? And if our speed is below the speed we want to be at the end, then we always increase. But if it's above, then we, uh, if it's above or we want to increase and go above that speed, then that's what we need to check to make sure that um, we can actually increase our speed or keep it the same or whether we have to decrease. So let me show you my logic. Again, most of this right here is um, input output. Um, one important thing here is that I, um, in order to find the amount of um, time remaining, I use the formula um, to find the sum of a range of numbers, which is n times n minus one, n times n plus one over two. Um, and I subtracted those instead of using like a for loop just for the sake of time complexity. Um, and then the rest of the logic is exactly what, I'm, what I told you. Um, if it's possible to increase the position, then we increase it. Otherwise, if it's not possible, then we decrease it and we always increase our time. And all we want to do is at the end, return the entire list of times in a file and close that file. So again, that was a really quick explanation. I encourage you to go through um, all of these problems on usecode.org, look at the solutions in depth, or maybe pause this video or read the code. But the goal of this video was to teach you the algorithms that go behind solving a problem. You know, not so much coding like our other videos. So be sure to check out our series on Java, web development, and Python if you want to learn more about how to code and syntax. But this video was a lot more about algorithms. Please like and subscribe um, if you want more content, more videos, and more supplemental um, coding. Um, thank you, and um, uh, until next time.